Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Mohamed Rahimi Online Basketball Clinics. Today, we are pleased to welcome Mr. Roberto Chiari, a very special guest from Italy. It's my big pleasure to have you here. Uh, Mr. Roberto, as everyone knows, is uh, one of the great Euro periphery and especially as a FIBA referee instructor. And today, he will be sharing with us his expert knowledge on the Baker Fall uh, topic. Thank you very much for uh, the words, for the invitation. And it will be a big pleasure for me to stay and to spend this uh, hour with uh, you and all the friends who are online. Mohammed. Uh, with that, I ask to give your full attention to dear Roberto and stay on mute. Uh, don't open your mic, please. And anyone can ask question at the end of the webinar. Uh, you can start it, uh, Mr. Roberto. Can I share my screen? Let me allow that, please. Yeah. Oh, one second. You need to allow me to share my yes. screen. Yes, now you can start it. Okay, great. Optimize. That's good. Share. That's good. I think I think that now you all can see my screen. Just a confirmation. Yes, that's great. Excellent. So Good evening, everybody. Good evening to all the friends that I saw online and all good evening to everybody also that I don't know. Special, uh, special uh, hello to my friend, Mr. Ban from China, all the friends from China, all the friends from Greece, from uh, Hong Kong, from uh, everywhere in the world. So it's really a pleasure for me, all the other friends who wanted to join into this uh, webinar. We will stay no more than one hour together, I probably even less, because we know that online the concentration is, uh, is going down. And tonight we will, we will talk about this topic and I was um, asking which topic uh, could be useful for you and we will start from this. The, the topic we will talk about is uh, fake foul. Before starting my presentation, what I prepare, I need your help. And I'm kindly ask you uh, to open uh, another page on your uh, browser. And now I will show you. Uh, you need to, to open a, a browser in uh, this page, which is uh, menti.com. And I need your help because I prepare something, but it should be nice if you go online with this uh, website, menti.com, you will uh, require to put this code, which is 70352, and to answer uh, this question. It's anonymous, and the question is, uh, what is uh, the biggest challenge for you as a referee, as instructor, as a former referee, as a player, I don't know uh, who are attending this clinic. What is the biggest challenge regarding the fake? What is the most difficult part when uh, you are officiating uh, that is uh, really difficult to, to understand regarding the fake? Uh, for me, uh, it's uh, really important, if you can help me, to know what is the problem that we are facing when we go on the court and we need to detect if uh, an ex a player is faking or is not faking, the contact is illegal or somebody is uh, showing. So take a little couple of minutes, if you can go uh, on, uh, online to this uh, website, it's absolutely anonymous and free, just uh, to give me your uh, contribution. I hope there will be no problem to to connect and to, to share. Because it's really important to know when we go on the court, what is the, the biggest challenge that we have in order to prepare ourselves before the game and to be ready and how we have to prepare ourselves specifically regarding this topic. And this is good for every topic that we need to cover on the, on the court. So ask yourself before, before going on the court, 
why I have a problem with the fake. What is uh, the situation in my experience game that create me some problem? Oh, super. Everybody, please uh, go to the menti.com uh, right now with your uh, other mobile or uh, your uh, computer. Uh, and uh, Not actual and when it's actual. This is uh, good. I think uh, when it's real and when it's not real. So to understand when a contact is uh, illegal contact or the player is acting. This is, uh, I, I understand, this is the biggest challenge that we have on the court. Absolutely. Let's see some other. Oh, super. Action and reaction. See the contact point. Super. This is really great. Uh, when is actual. So you see now we are building a, ment a, a, a map, uh, which is an individual map, but probably we can, each of us can recognize this contact or not. Play acting, yes. The mental flow of the game is really a nice aspect to understand also the moment of the game. I really like this. Super. You can, you can have, uh, I put the option three, uh, option for, uh, for each of you, scouting to fake players. Yeah, we will talk about the scouting, we will talk about uh, the fake players. Yes, also exaggerating, correct, opponent. It's really nice. Thank you very much for your uh, cooperation. I really like these points. Contact or not, this is also something that we need to work and we will see during our uh, webinar how we can see or how we can see better. I will give you one, one minute more if you want to participate to this because it is really important but even if you don't participate because probably you have uh, only the mobile or you cannot connect no problem it's just for you like to because to fix a problem and to improve in something in uh, officiating but this is also in every part of our life is to know what is the problem that we need to improve uh, so from where we have to start so I think that this is also a very, very good point. Okay, so let's go. And we can, we can start with, with this. So, fake a foul. First of all, we need to give the definition. What is a fake? Fake, as you teach me, is an action by one player and this player can be offensive and defensive player. It's something that the player is asking a foul. And for doing this, he's doing something which is exaggerated movement in order to create a, an appearance that something didn't happen. So it looks like that he received a foul, but actually this never happened. We need to understand also why the players are doing this. And this is the key of this rule. The players are faking because they want to gain an unfair advantage. And this is something that we cannot accept in our game because this is against the spirit of the sportsmanship and the fair play. And we are the referee, we, we are the one who need to maintain the fair play and the, the correct flow of the game during all the 40 minutes. So any player who is trying to fake is because he's want, he wants to have an unfair advantage. We need also to understand the terminology. And this I want to clarify immediately. Too many times we are confusing fake with flop. Flop is only a special type of the fake is the defensive player who is leaving himself going down on the floor when he receives a contact or doesn't receive the contact. But flop is only one part of the fake. So please, whenever you speak about the fake, use the terminology. Flop is only when we are judging charge or block. 
But anyway, flop is something which belongs to fake. So this is the, the most important thing about the definition. Now we go on the real things. We need to understand that can fake defensive player, can fake offensive player. And one of the key of our officiating, and I, I join with one of the points that you were writing, is scouting. We need to go on the court, prepare, knowing what can happen. And now we are talking about how a defensive player can fake. What are the most common situations in a game where we can have a fake from a defensive player? Usually, the most common are four. The first one is one against one when the offensive player is driving to the basket and me as defensive player, I try to impede him and then I want to, to receive a charge and sometimes I am trying to fake, so to go down on the court before the, the contact or just a small contact and I'm going down. This is one of the most common. The last very common, the second very common situation in a defensive player fake is when we are going to play in the low post. And when we have the offensive player who is going backwards because he wants to go closer to the basket, and the defensive player stay, stay, and when he feels the contact, he let him go on the floor. This is really very hard for us to, to judge, and that's why it's really important to have a correct position. The other situation when can happen that a defensive player is faking is during the screens and during the pick and roll situation. Me, defensive player, sometimes when I see the screen, I'm going against the screen and then I want to show to the referee that the screener is moving, but this is not true. I am the one who is looking for the contact. I am the one who is exaggerating the contact and I want to show something that doesn't happen. And then, the fourth situation is off-ball situation. Far from the ball, one against one, and one player sometimes is looking where the referee is looking. So if he sees that the, the eyes of the referee are not there, he go against the opponent and then suddenly jump off to show something that doesn't happen. These are the four situations that most commonly happen regarding the fake of defensive player. And just to summarize this, we, let, we go and we check four clips, very easy clips regarding one by one of uh, this situation. I think it's really important also to see, to see in the reality what's going on. Now we will see. This is the first situation. One against one. Here, we will have a lot of good replay. It's a drive to the basket, fast transition. The white player is going to the basket. The defensive player is positioning himself in a legal guarding position. But as you see here, the defensive player is going, start to going on the floor even before the contact occurs. He knows that the offensive player will come there, but he's not waiting the contact. He's ready to fall down before the contact. And this is something that we need to adjust, we need to see, and we need to officiate in the proper way. This is a second situation when regarding the screen. There is a player who is defending the player with the ball. And then when he see and he feel just the contact with the forearm, forearm he's uh, acting like uh, about killing him. And he saw where is the screen with the eye and then he let himself falling on the floor. This is a typical fake by the defensive player in a pick and roll situation. The third situation, it's a little bit more difficult for us to see. And this is again in a pick and roll and screen. 
Now we will have a situation here regarding a screen. Here, there is a screen. The defensive player is going against the screen because he's not using a proper technique because he's not looking where is the screen. And when he received the contact, oh, sorry. Sorry, I'm going to too further, too further, okay. And when he received the contact, he let himself go in without trying to stay with the offensive player. This is also something that we need to address. I'm not talking about warning, I'm talking about to address that we want to see now is an off-ball situation. And you will see these two players, how they are behaving. There is a situation with the replay will be much easier to see. Now see what the defensive player is doing, the blue player, what is doing in order to receive a charge. When he see the player, the white player coming, he's going straight against him. When he then he received the contact, and when he received the contact, he's bumping away. This is a typical situation of fake of the ball. But to judge this, we need the two eyes of the referee in this situation of the lead referees who are taking the play from the beginning to the end. We need a lead referee who is covering the play since when the blue players start to run alone. Because we have to know that there will be a contact and we need to be ready to, be ready to judge this kind of contact. This was just for us the first four situations regarding the defensive player. But also an offensive player can fake. Also an offensive player can fake. And I would like to say that the problem in these last years in European basketball, in world basketball, it's about the offensive player because we were working a lot regarding the fake by the defensive player, we were working not so hard with the fake of the offensive players. When we have the fake of the offensive player, here there are three major situations that can happen. The first one is what we call the head fake. There is a contact, defensive or defensive, sometimes on the body, and then we have the head of the player who is going up and back, even if there is no contact in the head. Or more and more, more smarter player now, they are clamping the defensive player and then using this clamp, they are showing something that, that didn't happen or they create. The second situation also for the offensive player are the situation of screens and pick and roll. And then we have the new fashion, which is the shooter faking. Because we need to know that players are adjusting their skills according also to what we are looking for. And if you think that in the last two years as a referee around the world, worldwide, we were working a lot on the protection of the shooter. And now the shooter realized that they are more protected than before. So now they want even something more. So when they realize that there is a very good defense, they want to show something because they know that they are, they are failing the shot. They want to show something that didn't happen. So some movement strange with the body, some strange movement with the head, some strange movement with the, with the, with the feet. And sometimes they are the one who are creating the contact. And just to continue with, uh, with this, we will go now with the clips regarding the fake of the offensive player. Also here, I think it's a... Uh, one against player white and player with the green. The white player here is uh, receiving a defensive foul from the green, but this is uh, absolutely a guess. 
a, a gift because the defensive player is in legal guarding position, the hands are very close to his body, the one who is creating the contact is uh, the defensive play, the offensive player who is uh, clamping and then head faking, showing something that didn't happen. That's why it's really important for us as defense, as a referee to be focused on the defensive player. Here, the defensive player is doing nothing illegal. The contact is a normal basketball contact. The offensive player is going towards and then is the one who is exaggerating. But thanks to this, because we don't have a correct open angle, so we are officiating not the action, but the reaction of the white player. So this white player is receiving a defensive foul, which is not absolutely his, how would I like to say, he was not deserving this kind of foul. The other situation here is uh, regarding uh, the situation of pick and roll. When offensive player is uh, also showing something that doesn't happen or is exaggerating. Now we will have a pick and roll situation here. Now here is the coverage of this kind of play and how we are doing it. You see, the offensive player is uh, just moving the head when he see and when he feel that the white player is only in the head but there is no push there is no grabbing his head faking he is showing something that didn't happen but he's showing this just to obtain an unfair advantage and he is a city he is he's receiving a defensive foul when nothing happened. And we as a referee, again, we need to have a good position and we need to be ready to officiate this kind of play. We cannot be straight in the position like here. Here we have a player who is coming to receive the screen. We need to be able to anticipate the play and see the point of contact, if there is contact. The third situation, it's a what we were talking before, it's a, a shooter fake. Here is very clear, and the, the referee here are doing a very good job. Number seven, and ready for the shot. There is no contact. He see the defensive player coming, and when he see the player, he's uh, disbalanced, he's showing his balance, he's losing his balance, and then he want to show that he received a contact, contact which didn't occur. And this is absolutely correct, the decision by the referee to charge him with a technical foul, even if there was not a warning before. Because here, this is a situation, and we will talk later, regarding excessive fake. But this is very typical, and more and more are situations we can, that we can find in our games, more and more. So, once we realize this situation, defensive when they are faking, offensive where they are faking. We go to our job. What the referee must know? What is really important for a referee to prepare his game in order to be ready and to be able to officiate this kind of play? First of all, we need to have a very good basketball knowledge. We need to know the movement of the player, we need to know the, the, the principle of the screen, we need to know the, how a player are defending, we need to know the tactic of the team. That's why it's really important at basketball scouting. Then we need to know also the individual technique of the players. We need to know if a player is right-handed, if he's left-handed, we need to know what he, if it is a good shooter or he likes to drive to the basket. We need to know if he's a, a very good uh, uh, player who is having good screen because he has good fundamental or he's having not legal. We need to know the players. In our level, in your level, now with all the techniques that we have, all the video, all the material that we can collect, 
we need to know the big players. But knowing the players doesn't mean that we are prejudging them. We need to be ready because probably, and this, uh, I don't want to say something uh, wrong, but there are some players who are more addicted to the fake. And if they realize that they can receive something more, they will continue. That's why we need to stop. But we need to know who are these players and every team. And we need to talk with them. Our job is not to detect the fake. Our job on the court before the game is to prevent the fake. They need to know that we are looking at them all the time. And if a player knows that we are looking at them, because he likely that we can take the play from the beginning to the end. That's why it's really important the scouting to know the players, to know who are the players and who are their skills and also their weakness. And then as a referee, we need to know the protocol. And we will talk later about the protocol, about the procedure when fake is happening on the court. Because all this point is only for one great purpose. Our job is to clean the game. And faking is something that we really need to clean. We really need to clean from the beginning to the end. And we clean the game regarding the faking, not with the technical foul or the technical foul for sure, not with the warning. We clean the game with the preventative officiating. We need the, we clean the game before going on with we clean the game with our consistency. And we will talk about this. Now, which kind of, of fake we have? The first of all is the standard. Standard fake is uh, when a player receives the contact and while he receives the contact and he wants to show something that didn't happen or he wants to exaggerate, he doesn't create any illegal contact. So this is the normal standard fake. What the referee has to do? The referee, and you know better than me, has to show immediately the official signal. The official signal, and then we will go with our protocol, and we will go later. And then after the official signal, we need to apply the protocol. But we will go deeply later. Then we have standard fake, but we can have also legal contact. So in this situation, we need to call the defensive foul. This is our duty. If we want to clean the game, we need to punish the faker who creates an illegal contact. No mercy, no compromission. If you are faking and you are creating an illegal contact, you will receive a defensive foul. And we have to know that in the moment that I call a defensive foul, the fake doesn't exist anymore. I cannot give to the player an official word. If I call the foul, the defensive foul, I cannot give an official warning. But a superior referee, a referee at your level, but also the young referees, we need to start to talk with the player. Not officially, but we need to, to start to talk with the player. Hey, guy, I don't need your help to, to call you a charge. If a, a charge will happen, I will call you. You don't need to... The player has to know that we saw his action or her action. We cannot ignore, we cannot skip this situation. Even if we call the defensive foul, we cannot give an official warning, but we must talk to the player. We need to talk to the player because if we do this, for sure, he will think about the next time. And so we are starting to clean the game. Then there is the third situation of the fake. And here, my friends, no mercy. No mercy. No pity. Nothing. Here we are killer. But to be killer, we need to see correctly and we need to be sure 100%. The excessive fake, so the player who is jumping, on the floor without receiving a contact must receive a technical foul immediately. 
if I don't receive a contact and I don't create any contact or my fake action, sorry, no, mesh, no mercy. Here, there is no, 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 no brain. This is a direct technical foul because this isn't a sportsman-like behavior. This is something that we need to cancel and to delete from our games. No question. But I repeat, we are not excessive fake hunter. No, we are not fake hunters. No, we are looking for something that happened on the court. So if you are not sure, please don't do this. But when happen, and we must be sure you are ready to do this. This is how we build our systems. I see what happened, and now I have no problem to charge you with a technical foul because this is an unsportsmanlike behavior. No, no question about this. Protocol. And I would really like to all of you to to put a very great attention because we are always talking about the protocol, but it's really hard to see a referee on the court or a crew on the court following the protocol because we are shame. We are, we are thinking that we are doing something which is not good. No, no, we have a protocol to follow. To follow. We have a protocol that we need to follow to give credibility to our decision, to give credibility to our officiating. So how is going this protocol? A fake situation. Super. This is the signal. I start from the, from the top and then I go down two times. Two, not three, not one, two. My elbow is my pivot foot. So all the movement start from my elbow and I'm using my elbow as a pivot. So it's one and two. This is the official signal. So during the live ball, happened the situation, and you know better than me, the clock, the game clock is running, we cannot stop the game. Super. But we need to show everybody, we need to inform players that we detect this uh, fake. That's why during the live ball, we need to show the signal two times, but please use also your verbal support. Hey, blue 10, this is a fake. Because this will help people. We need to inform players that we saw something which is illegal, but we cannot stop the game clock. Super. But it's not, only, it's not enough only the signal. We need to use our voice, verbal support. So this is the first part of the protocol. Then at the first dead ball, we need to inform the player and the coach of that team that we are giving them the official warning regarding fake. And to do this, we can do this by ourselves. We can have the support of our colleagues. So I'm going to the player, my colleague is going to the coach or vice versa, no problem. Share this kind of responsibility, but do it without any problem. Don't be ashamed. We need to inform them, not only them. Now, we are two or three on the courts. Be sure that also your colleagues are informed about the warning. And every time, please use the voice. Now, more and more in our modern officiating, is not enough anymore to use the signal. We need to use the verbal support. Players, coaches, colleagues, has to know the tone of our voice. They have to know our voice. Use your language, no problem, but we need to communicate also with the voice. So this is now the very important part because we want all the part of the team to know exactly and to agree with all of us that now this team has received the warning. So in this way, each of us, are ready to charge a technical foul if the situation will come. And if the situation is coming, whoever is the referee, whoever is the stop the game, 
with the official signal. I will show the signal again regarding the fake. And then, very easy, without emotion, no emotion, this is a player choice. It's not your choice to give the technical foul. You didn't want to give a technical foul, but this is the choice of the player, because we did all properly. We give them the warning, we ask them the cooperation, they want to continue, sorry. In the book of our solution, we have only one solution, technical foul. But without emotion, without shaming, we are not doing something against somebody. We are only applying the rules. So charge the player with a technical foul. And because of this, I want to show you a very, very, very good example of procedure and protocol. And this is a colleague who is a and really kind ask you to see how he's following the procedure. Contact, in his opinion, is fake. Stopping, showing the signal, technical foul. This is what we are asking you to do during the game. There was already the warning before. We cannot show. The referee is following exactly the protocol. Stopping the clock. We will see now. Contact. In his opinion, is a fake. Stop the clock. This is good. This is what we want. Then the second step is signal. Two times. One, two. And then technical foul to the player. Maybe here is too aggressive, but this is very good. And now I will go to the table. Support my table. We, will see. we need to repeat this. So it's number 15 in this situation. Look the IoT. Because of faking two times again, technical foul, one shot. Very easy. Confident, calm, and trustable. And trustable. This is the key. We are doing something in the correct way. And because of this, we are trustable. And our job is to have the correct decision, but also to be trustable in the court. Now, we go with uh, the sign of fake. Because when we prepare the game, we need to know that there are some signs, specific signs, that can help us. And if we are able to detect a little bit in advance, we will have the good solution of the play. So the sign of fake is uh, two are very simple. The player is making uh, exaggerated uh, movements, but this is something which is very easy to say. Or when there is a contact and you see the feet who goes up and when the player is going down, he prepare himself with the hand to going down in a loft, soft landing. So this is uh, the first signal. But this is one of the signals that we saw also before in the clip when we had the off-ball situation. The faker is looking for the contact as a first, because if I want to fake and I don't want to receive a technical foul for exaggerating faking, I need the contact to fake. So I'm going towards the player just to look for the contact when I contact with So that's why it's really important to see what is doing the defensive player and the offensive player too. The second signal, the second alarm is the head fake. When the head, like we were talking before, is going up and back, but the contact is on the, the torso. The contact is on the hand. And you see the player who is going with the head up or back. What is this? If the contact is on the head, I can understand. But if the contact is on the body, why? You are, have to show me that you are moving and you're going up with the, with the head. So this is a sign of fake. It means that the player is doing something which is showing something that didn't happen. And the other one, which is a little bit difficult, more difficult to see, if there is a strong contact, the landing spot will be far from me. I will fly away. But if 
I know that I want to fall down when I receive the contact. The, the, the place where I will fall down is very close from the landing spot. This is also a very important sign of fake. And this can be also very nice to, to see when we go back home and to analyze our games to see, mm, look this player. Mm, this time he, he won. He had, he had received a foul, but he didn't deserve because uh, he was ready to fall down and he was landing uh, one meter or 20 centimeters from the landing spot. Mm. This is something that we can recognize maybe later, but it's very important to, to be, how to say, to be trained about this. We were talking about fake. We were talking about fake by the defensive player, fake by the offensive player, sign of fake, under fake, but I repeat again, we are not fake hunters. We need to judge what really happened on the court. So before we act, we need to be very careful because remember that the player has the right to fall down on the floor to protect himself from injury. And not all the time that the player is falling down, he's uh, trying to cheat us or he's trying to receive a fake. But there can happen something that impedes him to stay standing. So again, if uh, the dribbler extends his arm or his forearm to create a space, this is still an offensive foul. Even if I am a little bit exaggerating, but he's the offensive player who is going out of his cylinder. He's the offensive player who is creating space to have a shot or to have a good pass. So don't forget this, but more and more, if the player steps on the foot of his uh, teammate, on his opponent, it's very difficult for him to stay standing. He will fall down, no problem. But this is not a fake. I am a player and I am moving laterally and then my feet goes over the feet of my colleague. How can I stay standing? Even if I receive a smooth contact. But that's why our eyes must be in all the play. We cannot look only at the ball. We need to have distance, IoT, and space to see the full play. We cannot officiate only one part of the play. And then we see a player falling down and say, ah, okay, the contact was very small. Yes, it's very small. And they put the feet on the feet of his teammate. How he can stay up? And remember, again, a player have, has the right to fall down if he wants to protect himself from injury. That's why it's really important to, to know the basketball. That's why it's important to know the movement of the player as we were talking before. I will show you here uh, one, one clip, which will be the, the last clip exactly regarding this, uh, this situation that we were talking. I, you will see now this situation. Here we have double situation when the offensive player first is spreading the arm and then this number 22 red is receiving a technical foul for faking by the referee. Initiating the fine of Eurobasket and you see the score, how important, but in all the game is important. So here, how you can see there is the spreading of the forearm by the offensive player, okay. It's, it's true that the 22 is going on the floor, but then you will see by the replay where he's putting his feet. He cannot stay up. He cannot stay standing. He needs to go on the floor because he loses the balance because of his movement. You will see on the next replay. Here we have the offensive player who is spreading the former. So this is already offensive foul and now you will see the second movement here you see 
defending, I'm putting my feet over my teammate's feet. How can I stay standing? Impossible. This cannot be judged as a fake. We go to the conclusion of this uh, presentation. And I like all the time to have a checkpoint because if I have the checkpoint, so I have the basis to officiate this kind of play. So as a referee, we need to see the full play and not only the final reaction. Because as you brought also in the beginning of this session, action, reaction, we need to see the action. We cannot judge the reaction. That's why we need to referee the defense. We need to put ourselves all the time in the correct position on the court to see the defensive player what is doing illegally. I repeat again, we are not fake hunters. We are foul hunters. Yes, this is our job. We are looking for the illegality of the defensive player. This is our job as a referee. But we are not looking for the, for the, for the fake. But if we, are, we have the focus on the illegality of the defensive player, it will be much easier to see when an offensive player or defensive player are faking. Remember also that illegal contact must be called as fouls. No way. And also remember, this is a big problem in our game, especially in Europe, that marginal contacts are part of the game and are legal. We cannot stop the game for mosquitoes and then we leave some big elephant contact during the game. And the last checkup point is remember to follow the protocol, as we were mentioning before. The protocol is really important, I repeat, because this will give consistency and credibility to our decision. So, now, now it's your time. If you have any question, if you have uh, any doubt, if uh, I, saw some, I, I told something which is not clear, I think that now is the time to, to clarify and to answer to your question. And I would really love to have a lot of questions. Thank you so much. Uh, let's check questions. Uh, if there are any questions, let me know, please. Anyway, I just want to say if... Mr. Abkarian, please. Uh, Let's go with the question. Yes. I will stop the just the sharing or you, or you want me to share. It's the same for me. Okay. Uh, would you please uh, open your mic, Mr. Abkarian? I will stop sharing. Okay. Please open your mic. I I saw the two question in. Uh... Yeah, we have another question. Can I ask yeah, a question? Yeah, now I can hear you. Can you Natalia. hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you imagine the player penetrated to the basket and the defensive player established legal guarding position in his cylinder. The offensive player exactly hit the torso of the defensive player. This is clear offensive fault. At the okay. same time, defensive player uh, make an exaggerate uh, flopping himself on a floor. What should the referee do this time? Two clear falls it uh, approximately the same time. Clear offensive fall, clear exaggerate and flopping by the defensive player. What should the referee do that time? Thank you very much for the question, which is uh, absolutely something which belongs to the game and happened a lot of time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. And I come back from uh, uh, my presentation. Remember that uh, illegal contacts are illegal contacts. So if it's a clear offensive foul, it's a clear charge, we need to call the charge. But then our job is not finished in that moment. Our job is then 
to go to this player, to the defensive player who was exaggerating, and talk with him. We cannot give him an official warning. This is not our job in this moment. But we can go there, we must go there, and we can use a very simple phrases. Hey, hey man, I don't need your help. You saw, I call you the offensive foul. But I call the offensive foul because it was a clear charge, not because you were jumping, not because you were... But, but everybody uh, in the gym see the player flopping himself. But yes. you just uh, verbal warning? Yes, you, you talk with the player. Yeah. And then when yeah. you go, when you go to, to report, for example, if it's but clear... before, if you, he has already warned uh, that player or that team, and it's then... not a warning. The, forget now the words warning. We are not giving any official warning. We are giving him an advice. An advice is not a warning. Because if we call the offensive foul, we cannot give any kind of warning. Now I'm giving an advice, but before giving advice, for example, if I want to, to sell my call, okay, when I show the foul at the table, I go to the table, it's number 15, it's charging foul, it's strong contact, and then he fake. So if with my boy support, I already informed the play, everybody that I saw exactly what happened. So I inform everybody that I saw the contact and I saw also the fake. This is something which is clarifying that we are on the same page. So everybody will see, ah, okay, the foul was before the fake, great. And then I will take this player separate and say, hey guy, I don't need your help. If it is a charge, I will call the charge, no problem. I don't need your help to go on the floor and go on the floor in this way. Please help me. Remember to ask the help to the player. This is something which is working in all our aspect in the game. A, even in the, in the conflict, A, help me, please. Help me. Help me, please. Because with your help, we will have a better game. And if we ask the help to the player, probably not all the player will help us, but 95% of the player will help us because they want to play a clean game. Thank you so much. Thank you for the, for the question. Uh, Mr. Roberto, uh, you can write the question on the chat also. If you like, I can read that. Uh, first, what does uh, clumping mean in the game? Yes. Second, so is, it's possible to have the PowerPoint. Thank you in uh, advance. Clamping is the situation, and now probably I'm moving myself, when the offensive player is hooking the arm of the player, is impeding if this is my arm of the defensive, I'm clamping, and then I, I move him, and then after doing this, I, I'm, I'm leaving the, the movement free, and I show if something, if like something happened, but from his fault, but I am the one who is hooking first. This is the clamping. So I clamp and then I leave, impeding him the movement. This is the clamping. And the PowerPoint, to have the PowerPoint, this is not a problem. Uh, you, you will have, a, this is a, my personal PowerPoint. You, will, you saw there is no logo, so it's absolutely free of, no problem. I will also, have. I will publish this uh, clinic on YouTube channel, on Facebook and Telegram. Uh, everybody can use that. Uh, okay. If there are another question, let me know, please. There is more question. No question. I will share again my screen, if it's possible. Okay. I will share my screen. Uh, I want to remember to all of you, and if you have somebody else, that uh, tomorrow we will have this. Uh, traveling, we cannot travel. So the only travel that we can talk is traveling on the court. It's traveling during Corona time. We will talk about the traveling, uh, traveling route. So this is the, the only travel that we can do during this time. 
and we will travel through the travel route. So this is really important. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, any question for everything, uh, this is my contact. So I, it would be really a great pleasure for me to answer your question, uh, uh, any kind of question regarding basketball, not private life. Uh, One so, other question from Malamas. Oh, okay, uh, Malamas, bravo. If we know from scouting that uh, at first they said congratulations to Syrian Federation and big thanks uh, to great Roberto. A question is, uh, if we know from scouting that one team has a fake player one, can we tell him about uh, this during warm up? Fantastic. This is, uh, this is, uh, this is Malamas. It's, uh, it's a great, great referee, and you don't know him, but he's really a great experienced referee. And there is a, a kind of referees who are officiating the, the game with the rule book, and there are a lot of referees who are, who are officiating with experience and with the preventative officiating. So if I know that the player is a big faker in, uh, in the game, during the warm-up, I will, I will come to him and say, I saw, I saw your game last, uh, last week. Hey, you received three fouls and you, you didn't deserve any one of this. Just to put this as a joke. Uh, but just to let him know that I know exactly what happened last week or two weeks ago. You are not giving him a warning. You are not giving him uh, anything. You are just telling, hey, I saw. Wow, fantastic, eh? You, you, you received three fouls, you received two fouls, and no one of them was a foul. Congratulations. But tonight, I will, I will take care about you. Just this, with a smile. And this player, probably during the game, will think about before, before faking. And, and during the game, if it happened during the game, again, if you see the player who is trying to do something, talk with them. Talk with, hey. Come on, don't do this. I repeat, help yourself with the voice, help yourself with the preventative of officiating, which is really important. And we can win this, we can avoid a lot of technical foul, a lot of conflicts, believe me. And uh, a question from Mr. Nader. Mr. Nader, would you please open your mic? Tell me. I didn't understand, sorry, Muhammad. Yes, Mr. Nader. Connection now is not so good. Okay. Mr. Nader. Yeah. Yes, uh, you can ask your question. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Roberto. Hello. Thank you for your explanation. Uh, I have a question about the intense of uh, contact between the uh, offensive and defensive player. Is it, uh, is it important to recognize uh, that uh, a referee can uh, understand when a contact is uh, harder than other uh, in, uh, illegal contact or not? Is it important to fake or not? Uh, uh, let me try to understand if I understand correctly your question. You're, you're talking about the level of the contact. Uh, somehow, yes. For, for sure, it's important to know uh, the well, level of the contact. I mean that if, it, uh, if a contact is harder than normal, yes. it should be a contact, not a fake. Is it correct or not? Eh, it's uh, regarding uh, the basketball. That's why it's really important to know the basketball. Basketball is a play of contact. So yeah. we need to expect the contact. Illegal contact, I mean. Illegal contact, I mean. Illegal contact is a part of the game. It's, uh, how to say, the live part of the game. It's the best part of the game. Everybody wants to go to see the basketball game, to see the contact, not to see uh, no contact in the game. Yes, of course. That's why, that's why the bigger problem that we have in the games uh, when we're talking about uh, fake is uh, when we have a big player against the small player or vice versa. Because the size is really diff different 
the weight is really different and how the, pe the players are strong is a completely different. One of the most difficult parts to understand when there is a basketball contact or it's something which is over the basketball contact. So it's a defensive foul or because this a lot of time happen when the small player, because he knows that it's against a very big player, just when he feels the contact, he's flying away. But this is not a met with, this is not something that we can judge. We can judge the illegally illegality of the contact. So if the offensive player is going outside the cylinder, okay. If I'm going straight against the body, okay, it doesn't matter if it is big player or short player. I don't know if I, I was able to, to answer to your question. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you very you. much. Mr. Ahmed. Ahmed. Yes, thank, thank you, Roberto. I, I really enjoyed the, the presentation and I gained a lot of uh, uh, helpful information from you. My question is, as you explained about, the, about how to, to, to officiate the action and reaction, so can you please give us like a tip how we can uh, train ourselves to call the action, not the reaction? I know you said in the presentation, one of the tip is the position of the, uh, the referee. And can you help us to give us like another tip to train ourselves to develop this kind of calls and, and you know, we watch the, the, the action, not the reaction of the player. Thank you, Ahmed, for the question. It's a question of the, the ear and it's really, really good. Uh, here we need to talk about some aspect of officiating. The first one is positioning. This is the key. The positioning is the key and to be in the correct position, as you know, and all of you knows already, the key is to be one step ahead of the play. I need to anticipate the play. So I need to risk some time thinking what will happen and maybe not all the time I will be right and will happen what I was supposing but I need to risk sometimes. This is a risk that we have to take. So to make a movement on the left, on the right, just a small uh, difference of angle, to have a better view for what's going next. This is uh, what a superior referee has to do. First things. The second thing is to see the not the reaction. We need to understand one of the things that we are training the referee is uh, the timing of the call. There are some contact that the timing, where the timing of the call, if it is to one to five, I can call after three and a half or four. This is, for example, contact in the, the rebound situation. This is, uh, for example, uh, contact uh, when there is a, a transition. So I can delay my call to see the development of play. But when we are talking about one against one situation, and this is when happen action and reaction, because we have the two players who are very close, the timing of the call must be very quick. I cannot wait. So I see I call, I see I call. Because in the moment that I'm waiting a little bit, so from my time of reaction is uh, no one in this scale from one, but this, in the moment that I will call when the reaction is happening and then I'm not, I'm not trustable. That's why it's really important to train ourselves that there are situations when I can have a delay call, but there are also situations when I can, I must have an, an immediate call. And situation in one against one, when the player are very close physically, I cannot wait. One of the, the situations where it's happening most of the time is the post play. Post play, we are waiting, we are waiting, we are waiting, and then suddenly we, are, we allowed probably two, three illegal contacts, and then our arousal, our emotion are increasing more and more from each contact. And when there are the fourth contact, which maybe is the, the contact created by the other player, now we are ready to call. This is not what is requested to us. 
it's difficult it's, uh, to have, a, I would say, ability to recognize the situation and to detect the situation immediately. And the second, the third things, and then I will stop, is again to use the voice. We can even have a small delay in the call. So we call in the moment that the reaction is happening. But if we have this feeling, we need to use the voice and to inform everybody that we saw exactly what happened first. So I'm calling the, the, the holding. So if I'm calling the holding and now there is a charge, everybody now will understand that I was calling what has happened before. I'm not calling what everybody is looking now. I don't know if I make myself understood. But this is also using the voice. It's a great tool for us, especially in the top professional basketball and top professional referee. One other. I answer your question. Yeah, uh, he said thanks. Uh, one other question. Maybe you mentioned that uh, from Aryan Jamshidi. You mentioned that if there is a fall first, uh, there shouldn't be any official warning. But it might be impossible to have a conversation uh, with the player in person for a while, uh, and the contact and the scene would be forgotten. Uh, how can we pre pretend uh, the next faking? How to inform everyone about that? You, if you lose the opportunity, if it is a defensive foul, you call the defensive foul. As I told you before, you forgot. You forget about the warning. You forgot about the fake. It's like this fake never exists, never happened. So if you have the opportunity to talk with the player immediately, super. You cannot talk with this player after three minutes. It's not worth it. It's talking. So if we are able, we have the opportunity to talk immediately with the player, super. If we don't have, because the game doesn't allow us, okay, it's uh, one situation. You call the defensive foul and if something similar will happen again, you will, you will uh, behave in the same way in the next future. Thank you for the question. This is really, really good. If we call the defensive foul, the warning, official warning uh, cannot be, but even the friendly speaking with the player, if there is no possibility to do it, okay, leave it next time. Forget it. Uh, thank you so much. Uh dear roberto for taking up your precious time to us and i thank you uh, everybody uh well uh to tomorrow in this program again uh at the same time uh, will be traveling topic uh be on time tomorrow i will start at uh 7 p.m uh for italy and uh yes. 8 p.m uh for uh, turkey and 9 30 p.m for iran time so this program is a independent program not depend on uh, other places federation or another else uh, so join to our facebook channel and youtube channel uh, with my name muhammad rahimi please subscribe the youtube channel to have uh, these videos uh, to review that uh, everybody say uh, thank you uh, mr roberto Thank you very much for this opportunity. It was really a pleasure, really. My big pleasure to uh, have you again. And uh, uh, it's my big pleasure to be between uh, all you great referees as a coach. Uh, uh, yes. Thank you so much. Uh, have a good time. Stay safe. Stay full. Stay safe all. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.